Hello boys and girls, welcome to part 3 of the EJ25 build. What are we doing today? We're doing, we're doing, we're gonna seal up the block. Remember where the, where all the pins uh, went in through the pistons. Uh, we gotta seal up all those holes uh, around the block. From there you're gonna see me struggle to put on the oil, the rear, the main oil seal. Then engine goes on the engine stand, then, then oil pump and whatever else I can fit into this video to make it last for about 20-25 minutes maybe water pump, maybe something else, we'll see let's get to work now it's time to plug these holes up one of them, which is this one, which is cylinder number one gets a washer even though this one gets a washer, I am gonna use RTV on this one as well just a tiny bit on the threads underneath the washer you know I gotta say I should have bought this years ago this is a 14 just finger tight for now see what I'm doing I just use that washer and whatever I, I've used so far uh, gasket wise or o-ring wise whatever the old ones I, I all like I mentioned before I kept and I'm putting them away the gasket said that I've bought a, a lot extra came in the package so do this so you don't miss anything this side is slightly different well besides the plug I'm gonna reuse uh, these two from the 06 STI even though the black is an 08 WRX this one is just more thicker Here, let me show you the WRX one so as you can see this is WRX this is STI hopefully this will fit now I just gotta clean this up so I cleaned up these bolts some of them had a little bit of RTV on them just doing this with a wire brush now <clears throat> I'm gonna apply oil on this o-ring I don't know what the torque specifications are on these Phillips screws I'm just gonna make it tight not too tight can be you know more than 10 or so foot-pounds of torque Okay, that should be good. All right, cleaned up the cover. Before I put it on, I'm gonna torque these plugs down to, people say 25, 31, 33. Some manuals, I mean. I'm gonna try 33. I'm gonna go up to 51. Okay, now RTV needs to go all around this cover, okay? But what I've noticed, some of these go through, like this one, doesn't but these go through this one doesn't this one doesn't I can see the inside actually goes through and through the outside here so this one goes through the outside and this one does as well so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna put RTV around on the inside and on the outside of where the screws go Again, just finger tight for now. Wait till the RTV dries up. You can see it squeezed out a bit. Just gonna wait an hour for this. And that should be it for the block. The seal is up next. RTV should be dry by now. It's been an hour. All right, this is the old seal. It's been sitting outside, out on top of the bench. That's why it's so dirty, but I wanna point something out. Hopefully you'll be able to see it is that this oil seal is directional Okay, just double check All right, this is gonna go in the box so Maybe you can see it maybe not 
there are lines, angled lines, all around on the inside of the seal. They go this way. All around. The crank, the back of the crank, spins this way. Okay, so what this means is that this is a directional oil seal. Now, if these lines, these grooves kind of, would be the other way around, meaning this way, you know, this way, then this seal would leak. But since the crank spins this way, you know, we're looking at the back of the engine, so this is the back of the crank. Since it spins this way, the oil kind of spins with it, and it hits these lines and these these grooves and as the oil hits it the oil goes back inside if the lines would be this way then it would leak out but since they are this way you know there are different types of seals there they can be two directional one directional left or right whatever so make sure double check whenever you do any kind of oil seal double check look at these lines so you don't have you don't end up uh, install uh, the wrong seal and you don't end up with uh, an, an oil leak I don't have the special tool to install this oil seal so I'm gonna oil this up on the inside and the outside I did wipe this mallet uh, from dirt Okay, and I'm just going to tap this in. Okay, sorry I didn't show this, but I had someone in here. I wasn't going to, I was doing the work while someone was talking to me anyways you saw i had a hard time doing this with just the mallet it kept popping out so i used fortunately enough i have this oil filter socket okay i have a whole set of these things and this is the perfect size for that so yeah i used that pretty much and i kind of i wiped off uh, most of the oil I guess I had too much oil and that's why maybe that's one of the reasons why it kept popping off on the other side so yeah so that's this is what I used so you don't want to go any deeper than the edge of the block it needs to be flush with the edge just so the inside seal sits just I don't know maybe two millimeters on the on the inside away from the edge of the crank so now that we have everything done on this back of the engine it's time to put put it on a stand I'm going to bring it to the edge of the workbench all right I'm going to reinstall these studs these don't have to be super tight these are 14 mil these are the exhaust nuts or a turbo, whatever, all those. So that's what I'm using to hold up the block while it's on the stand. Okay. These are obviously the transmission mounting points all right now that the engine found its way onto the stand decided to do the oil pump first gotta remove the crank bolt yes i did i got me a 12 millimeter pump I believe they come from 2000 some I don't know something 3.6 or 3 even 3.0 legacy GT
12 made in Japan 12 if you ever buy these make sure it says 12 several times on the pump especially on the inside here okay so the pump came with its own oil seal and new bolts see the it all came from the dealer good stuff okay, we're going to be using silicone or RTV on this so we're just going to wipe it off with brake cleaner and wipe the pump as well so turn the pump and check for fitment okay okay i'm going to install the seal onto the pump before i put the pump back on A little bit of oil on the inside, inside and outside. Remember, I was talking about these lines on the on that big seal for the the rear main seal. These lines are the opposite way because the crank in, the, in front of the engine spins uh, this way the opposite of what it spins in the back now I'm gonna apply some RTV on the pump it's just easier than doing it on the block but your choice so the rubber seals go here Okay, basically going on the inside of the bolt holes okay and around this area here plenty of room for the seal the seal I'm gonna install onto the block right now a little bit of oil on the seal the oil really also makes a better seal but also keeps it keeps the seal in place makes it stick all right, so I just did put an extra bead over here. Remember to check, make sure these are on the pump as well. Finger tight. For now, we're gonna wait for that RTV to dry up a bit. So very lightly, these I'm gonna torque down to five foot pounds of torque. Now it's time for the water pump. I'm gonna reuse my old one. It, it only has 37,000 miles on it. It's just dirty. I'm gonna clean all this up, clean up the bolts, and reuse those. And I did torque down the oil pump, and the the, the pattern would be. Just starting in the middle and then work your way out. So let's say number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now it's time for the water pump. See this hole here? This hole goes through behind the seal inside if the water pump ever de develops a leak it will leak through this hole first all right brand new gasket
9 foot-pounds of torque for the water pump starting from this bolt so this one here and then go on counterclockwise I'm not gonna torque it to 9 just gonna kinda snug them in all around first I'm gonna do a two-step All right, water pump done. All right, I, before I do anything else, I thought I'd take care of the bottom here. Put the um, oil pan back on just to cover up this hole. So I don't gotta worry about uh, dust getting in here. Now before I bolt this down, I wanna test fit the oil pickup tube this is the stock one I heard uh, read about and heard stories that these actually crack right about here I see no visible cracks on mine but I'm gonna replace it anyways and what I got is this the Moroso pickup tube that's for later It fits! Another O-ring. All right, the torque specifications for the buffle right here are 7.2, I'm just gonna go eight. So the pickup tube was eight. The baffle plate is going to be five. Double check. Test fit the oil pan. Wonder how high is the pickup tube, how close the pickup tube is to the bottom of the pen. I would say about half an inch should be okay. So right now the oil pickup tube is six and one eighth. And the we're at six about six and a half. Six and three eighths, six and a half. Just a little bit less than half an inch. So about this much, I'd, I'd say it's perfect. Time for RTV. Before RTV, there is a little O-ring. It is actually different. And the way it goes is this flat part of it is gonna go down onto the oil pan. So we're gonna do a little bit of oil as usual. So remember, the ribbed part of it up, away from the oil pan, the flat towards the oil pan. All right, I know putting silicone and the outside of the bolt holes is probably unnecessary. I did it anyways, it won't hurt. I am reusing the old bolts, by the way. Some of them are rusty, 
a little bit surface rust. Some of them are not, but that's okay with me. Tiny amount of RTV coming out. That's probably the perfect amount. Looking good so far. So I'm gonna give this a rest for one hour and come back to it and torque it down. Okay, it's been an hour. The torque specifications for the oil pan bolts is 3.6, but my torque wrench does not go anything lower but five. So I'm just gonna do five. So what I can do instead of going all the way to five, I can look at the numbers. Just go 4.6. Just being careful. I'm actually just gonna go around. All right, 4.6. 